Hey, what's up? Welcome back to the Aaron LeBauer Show. Um, I'm your host, Aaron. Well, the funny thing is, is we've got a guest today. It's been a little while since I had a guest on. And so our special guest today is Odell Miller. Odell is a physical therapist, new grad. He owns a uh, couple businesses, uh, Off the Bench app, where he's been training people through PT school. And he's got a clinic now, a cash clinic, Off the Bench clinic in Kalamazoo, Michigan. So Odell, welcome to the show. I'm super stoked to have you. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, man. Um, so just to kind of get started, I just want to get a little bit of background on who you are, kind of set the um, stage for like how we got here. Um, mm -hmm. You uh, you graduated uh, college. You didn't go right into PT school. Can you give us a little bit of like a, you know, compressed version of their journey between like college and how you decided to become a PT? Yes, sir. So um, like you said, my name is Odell Miller. Um, I grew up in Michigan and I played sports my entire life. I never had like an injury or anything that really made me choose physical therapy. Um, but I've always been intrigued with the body, uh, muscles, the way it moves. So I was like, I can go be a personal trainer, a massage therapist. But then I was like, I'm an extremist. Like even with football, I was like, if I'm going to play football, I want to go to the NFL. So I took that same passion, that same like um, – same viewpoint on physical therapy as well, as far as I want to take it as far as I can to get my doctorate. So why not do that? So that's why, honestly, I got into physical therapy. Um, and then, like I mentioned, I played a lot of sports growing up. So I actually played uh, football um, in Michigan. And then after that, I had a great opportunity to go um, try out for the Cleveland Browns and the Washington Redskins. And that's where I was in between um, undergrad and grad school. So I was doing the NFL for that time. And while I was doing that, because NFL is not promised, and I applied to physical therapy school and I got accepted. So I knew exactly where I was going to go is the second that they released me. So um, then I ended up in physical therapy school and took that same exact passion for football and sports and put it into physical therapy. And that's how I started. That's awesome. So how did, well, how did physical therapy get in your mind? Did you just look up like what professions did, you know, if you didn't see someone, no, I mean, neither did I, you know, mm -hmm. like who put that idea in your head that that would be the right career path? Mm -hmm. I'm actually not sure. That's always a good question. Um, I'm not sure. So I think I got an undergrad degree in exercise science. So a lot of people with exercise science degree would try to go for physical therapy. And I think we might've had a speaker come in or something like that, maybe. And then once, to be honest, once I, they had that tag doctor on it, I was like, oh, I can come be a doctor and something mm -hmm. I really enjoy and that I really agree with. Because I never wanted to be a medical doctor. I was like, I don't want to give medication. I don't want to do that just for the sake of being a doctor. And I was like, that aligns with what I want. Then I was that guy in the training room, like to this day, um, my massage therapist, I had one this morning. I'm always asking like, Hey, like what, what were you doing with your hands? Like, what, what are you doing back there? Like, tell me more about it. So I was always intrigued with the body. I just, I didn't want to know, like, I didn't want to just have services done to me. I wanted to know exactly what was going on so I can carry that information with me for it. And I was like, I want to be able to provide that for people like myself yeah. in the future. Dude, so that's awesome. Um, so you went from uh, college to NFL, right? Mm -hmm. Like, do you play? Do you play at University of Michigan or Michigan State or somewhere else? Uh, like, uh, Western Michigan. Okay, I just want to know what side yep. of the who to root for when it comes up on TV next time. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> and then yeah, I played Michigan and Michigan State. So okay, very cool. So, um, tell me, like, what was it in the NFL or training? Like, are there a couple lessons that you learned through that whole process of becoming an elite athlete that have helped you now in your businesses? Yes, of course. It's like, it's so weird. So at first, and I just recently been able to like, see this in it. I used to say like, oh man, I fell. Like I fell at making a long career in the NFL. But then I look back and I was like, I actually succeeded. It actually taught me like that I can literally do whatever I put my mind to. Because even growing up in high school, everyone wants to be in the NFL. What do you want? To, oh, I want to go to the NFL. I want to be a professional athlete. Everyone's telling you that. And it was like, it's so hard to do the 0.01%. But then once I did that and it actually was in the NFL locker room with guys that I used to watch on TV, and now that I work with NFL athletes, I'm like, I truly can do whatever I put my mind to. And having that mindset now, I'm like, there's nothing that's going to be as hard as me of what I did, in my opinion, going to the NFL. Like, it was very hard. So I was like, if I just direct that same energy somewhere else, I can do anything I put my mind to. So that really, that's what it taught me, honestly. The NFL taught me hard work, discipline, all the characteristics that you know from athletes and stuff like that um passion determination zealous but at the end of the day it taught me that if i put my mind to it and i'm willing to do the work i can accomplish it yeah that's awesome you know and, and i've had been noticing a pattern lately i mean i've noticed this a while but like people that 
not just excelled in sports, but spent years doing the same sport to reach yeah. the highest level they can, you know, mm -hmm. are ones that are excelling in like business. That right? makes Would, sense. Doesn't that make sense? Like it does. I mean, you don't go play NFL overnight, <laughs> you know, that's like, true. That's it takes true. A while. Um, that's true. Couple, couple, like just side questions. Mm -hmm. Who, who was the most, like, who'd you show up to in the locker room that you were like in awe of, but just became, mm -hmm. who was the most humble person? You know, do you have that? Ex I mean, I've had those, experiences. Um, like, I was just wondering, yeah. like, who was that person? You know? Yeah, I guess it was, I wasn't so in awe, but the first person I met in my first day with the NFL was Baker Mayfield. Yeah. And he was like right there greeting us, shaking hands, talking to you like it was, it was nothing. And then another one was, um, his name is David Nujumku. He's a tight end. Um, mm -hmm. for Cleveland Browns and I was like used to watch him to like learn from him and then we're just like hanging out just sitting there in the training room and he's just talking on our phones and I'm just like obviously the first thing they tell us when we get there is like all right you guys are now in the NFL there's no more like fans there's no more like like you're gonna start to see these guys walking around like when like OBJ was on the team when I was there so like you have to just act like it's normal and yeah. obviously my head is like this isn't normal but you become so acclimated to it and you're like all right I need to act like this is normal so you kind of calm down and then you start to tell yourself, like, dang, I made it. Like, I'm here. I'm supposed to be here. So it kind of switches your mindset mm -hmm. around a little bit. But that was definitely different. But that also showed me, like, dang, it's cool to see them in the light of, like, humbleness and, like, just talking to being normal humans than what you see on TV and what they talk about right. these professional athletes. So Yeah, I had a couple. And these are – it's like I had this experience where, like, the guys racing bikes, most uh -huh. guys around my ability or a little above were just assholes. You know, they yeah. didn't want to help. They didn't want to do anything – but these guys that were, you know, like, I don't know, a big jump above, like uh, yeah. Eddie Gregus was a national champion in race in Europe. And he was just like, hey, guys, how's it going? Great to see you here. You did a great race today. Just like, hey, let's That's awesome. Jonas Carney was one of the best sprinters, you know, and I think I finished like third or fourth one race off the front. And it but uh -huh. I, but he pit, someone else pit me from the sprint and they were like, mm -hmm. oh, man, great race. Like, that was awesome. Like but all these other guys were just like always like clawing at you and trying to keep you down. And it was like, yeah. these guys at the top were like, let me pull you up and just treat you like, you know, you belong, yes. which is very different. Right? Yes. That is very factual. Yes. I love that. Yeah. yeah. So, um, let's see. So NFL, then PT, like mm -hmm. when you went to PT school, um, mm -hmm. you went as an older student too. Like, what was it about school that uh, you thrived in? Or, and were there some things in school that kind of like, hey, they're holding me back or I should mm -hmm. do something different? You know, yeah. did you have any of those experiences? So starting off with what I, what, what I thrived in, what I thrived in was manual skills, being able to communicate um, in physical therapy school, like all of the practicals and lab practicals people would absolutely freak out in those like right before. And I'm like, what, why is everyone freaking out? Because of the pressure. They're not used to having like a professor watching them. But like I said earlier in this podcast, uh, my experience with the NFL, there is nothing else that would scare me as much as an NFL coach that can cut millions from me. Or they're like way more ruthless than these professors would ever be or could be. So like to them, people would cry before it. They would be like so nervous and shaken. But to me, I thrived in it. I was like, Oh, I played in front of a hundred thousand people before. Like this is nothing. One professor looking at me, like I'm in there just joking around like I normally wouldn't be myself. So I think I really thrived with that. And I didn't realize that I had that special thing until I saw what other people it would really like keep them up all night and they would practice so much. And then even like in the practice of that, they would keep practicing up into it all day, every day. But I understood how to prepare yourself for the game day, for the practical. You shouldn't just burn yourself into the ground 24-7. It's like a strategic way. And I took that to PT school and it absolutely worked. Um, but as far as like what I struggle with or I felt suppressed in, is standardization. Like yeah. I'm not a standardized guy. Don't don't try to standardize me. Even in the way that I learn, the way that I speak, the way that you speak to me. Because like even in football, the coaches know their players. They know who they can, how they can speak to someone to get them going versus someone else. Like, you know what I mean? So you talk two different ways to get you motivated. But when they standardize you, it won't work like that. So I think of everything in terms of like a team. So if we have a team and you're just standardizing the way that you're teaching or standardizing the way that you're explaining something and you have no other way to do it to help me, that's that's going to struggle for me. And then, like, I just felt like, not in a negative way, I love the PT profession, but going through PT school, all I saw was, like, how we were so boxed in, but not even within the rules, but within, like, ourselves, like the professors, mm -hmm. the students. When I talk to students, 
some things I would talk to them about, they're just like mind blown. And I'm like, is it not that black and white? Like, why are we doing it this way? And I was that guy in school always raising my hand saying like, hey, like, why are we doing it that way? Can you tell me why? And then sometimes and no like judgment to them, they wouldn't even know. And I'm like, so we're all just following like a blind system and not questioning why they're telling us to do things or why this happens. So I struggled with that aspect, um, but I knew what I needed to do. And I knew that, I mean, I was going to do something different and everyone in school knew I didn't keep it silent, but I wanted to help other people see that there are other ways as well. So, yeah, that's awesome. I, I had the same experiences. <laughs> I'm like Crazy. Wait, the wait, black wait, sheet. That, that didn't make sense. You know, yeah. <laughs> um, so you started a business in PT school. Right. Mm-hmm. And you, was this your, so you started a business doing like what training other like healthcare providers or other people doing weight loss, I think. Can you tell us a little bit about yep. that? And was that your first business or is this, you know? Okay. So it's actually not. So I used to tell people like, I'm like a entrepreneur turned doctor of physical therapy. So obviously I was playing football for so long. So it was my main focus, but I would Uber in college. So that's one thing I would Uber, um, make money. And then what I did was, we went to like a bowl game one time and they had like these lime bird scooters. Have you ever heard of yeah, those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I forgot where we were, but I saw those and I was like, what are those? So everyone else is like out having fun. We're like there for a week. Like it's like a celebration game. Um, and I was literally just like going around the streets looking at the scooters. Like, how does this thing work? Trying them out. And then um, when we got back from that bowl game, I literally looked up manufacturers, got a manufacturer, made, long story short, I made my own app um, and I created my own scooter business um, nice. locally. And I put them on campus for a couple of weeks, but compliance stuff, they're like, our roads aren't ready for this. I met with like the president right before COVID. Um, I was meeting with the mayor of the city right before COVID as well. I met with some like neighboring cities, COVID hit, then NFL, PT school. So then I redirected the scooter business a little bit to where it was like a leasing model. So I just didn't leave it on the street. So I was actually in PT school my first year running the business from Chicago. And this was in Michigan. And I had my dad like delivering it. It was, it was tough. That's so, awesome. um, I'll be in school. I'll be in class and like people, would, cause I was customer support. I was everything at the thing. I had one assistant and he was like free. He just wanted to be a part of it. Um, so I was assisting everything and then I had to close it because it was too much. Like in school, I was like, am I going to get a call? Like, what if I'm an exam and like someone calls and says, my scooter's not working. They're stuck in a store driving. It was just a lot. So I stopped that one. Um, then also I had a wedding entertainment business where we like do DJing, uh, videography for weddings. So I have a couple of subcontractors and I DJ myself. Absolutely fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and I started that with a football scholarship check. I was like, how can I make this $2,000 for the semester or a couple months until whatever? And then yeah. flipped over. Yeah, so I did that. And then how I got to the training app is, so I started posting on social media and I was just like, living the life, just showing my workouts. And people started asking, like, do you have any training programs that you can give me? Um, so basically my audience decided what they wanted. And it was also something I was very passionate about because obviously I was doing it. And I was like, oh, this might be something here. So after like the 15th person, person, I was like, matter of fact, I do have training programs that I have for sale. So I collected a list um, and I sold that list. And I was like, I'm going to figure out what to do with this list. So I actually like sold people before I even had an app or anything. And then I started looking around for something I can like do a platform on and then I made my own app and why well, didn't I white label my own app? Um, and then I started that business like in the first year, second year PT school, knowing then I was like, this can lead right into my physical therapy business when I graduate and I'll have better have both. Yeah. That's awesome. That dude, that's dope. Um, just for context for everyone listening, like how much money were you making per month with that business uh, while in PT school? Uh, with the app, I got up to 10 K. Yeah. I actually hit 12 K the last few months. So. Yeah, that's dope. And, you know, so this is one of those things where, you know, like it, what, what bothers me is when I hear people say new grads shouldn't start businesses, they need to work for five years. Uh, did anyone actually ever tell you that directly to your face? Um, that I shouldn't start. No yeah. one's ever told me I shouldn't start, but people were like, you can tell like, they'll say like, Oh, what are you going to do? Like, how are you going to get mentorship? How are you going to say, I said, I have, I can get virtual mentors. I can have, trust me, that's not like hard to do. Yeah. So people would say like, you know, like the, um, not negative, but the, I forgot how the verbiage around it, but like kind of like negative, but not negative, trying to like undermine you a little bit. Mm-hmm. Even with my app, they were like, my classmates would say like, and they're in a loving way. Like, what if you get too many clients? What if, I said, I was joking around. If I get too many clients, I'm going to hire you. Like <laughs> that's what's going to happen. <laughs> I'm not worried about getting too many clients. That's a good problem. Like I'll fire I some, it. I don't know, upcharge, but yeah. Um, so people would be like, have like negative stuff around that. But I think it was just more of, cause they, 
they see in you what they wish they had in themselves. Mm -hmm. Like not in a cocky way. That's oftentimes what I've started to realize. People see in you what they wish they had in themselves. So then they talk down about it where they say like negative things about it because they wish they had it. Yeah. Yeah. That's very true. You know, and I think that, you know, it's one of those things where for me, like I was basically told like, you know, same thing, like, oh, it's never going to work and all that. And, you know, I'm still hearing it. I've had clients 10 years ago told this and doing mm -hmm. million dollar years. And it's just like, Crazy. but I think what happens is, is you're right, but they're dismissing or uh, they're kind of like discounting people without even knowing some of the other mm -hmm. things they've done. I mean, I had already yes. had a business. You already kind yes. of had a business. Like yeah. we're adult students, like why shouldn't we be able to get out and start? A business? Yeah, exactly. It's the craziest thing. So I just want to like air that because people mm -hmm. listening and students listening should know that like, it's not just Aaron. It's not just Odell. It's a lot of people. Yes. A lot of people. This. Um, Start. yeah. Right. So, um, I guess right now, like if you had like, uh, advice to Odell as a student, or maybe some word of advice to other students who might be listening, uh, thinking about doing something like this, like what would that be right now? Dang. My biggest advice, um, thing, a couple of things. So like my biggest advice is like to do it, try it. So a lot of people like speculate and like they look at things, but they never try, they never do or they mentally jog, mentally run. They'll just think about doing something, research a lot of things. I had a few classmates like that. They were interested in something, but I would see them. They would just keep talking about it, doing it. Where me, I like to do stuff fast, speed, 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 fail fast, or lesson, we like to call it in the mastermind. Yep. Uh, learn my lesson fast and move on. So like even the businesses that I've had in the past, in between there, I did Amazon selling, I did drop shipping. It, but I was like, I'm gonna do it, do it, do it, do it, and keep fail, keep learning fast and be able to carry everything that I can to the next thing. But if I ever take so much time to do that one thing and it doesn't work, it's going to discourage me from doing the next thing, which could have been the thing that works. And you only need one thing to work. Like mm -hmm. you only need one thing. And then also who are you surrounding yourself with? Like that's a huge thing. I've noticed that in school, people, even growing up in football, like i never like, I won't say that I didn't fit in. Like I wasn't like a bully or anything, but like people knew that I, like, I didn't go out and drink. I was Ubering in college. Like, after we won a game, I would go Uber. And that, that was, like, very, like, real to me. It wasn't like I was trying to do anything. Um, but I was okay with being alone. But I realized other people aren't. So many people want to fit in so much that they're willing to do things that they might not believe in or that they know they shouldn't be doing just for the acceptance of others. So definitely who you surround yourself with. Like, go find like-minded people and surround yourself with that. And that'll help you elevate so much more. Yeah, and if absolutely. and if everyone around you don't understand what you're doing, it's probably a good thing. If if you can't be understood <laughs> by a lot of people, but it's probably a good thing. Yeah, it's like a good sign that you're doing something right when people are telling you your dreams are like mm -hmm. gonna fail or they're wrong. Yes, yeah. yeah, exactly. Right. If your dreams are bit is like if your dreams are too big for other people to believe, then they're the right dreams. Yes, that's you know? facts. Yes. Um. Awesome. So, uh, when did you graduate? Actually, I don't even know. Like, did you graduate the summer, the spring, last spring? Uh, graduated, dang, was it May, April, April, May, yeah, July, yeah. August, April, like April, May, almost like almost a year. It's 2024, it's like February, yeah, so like May, April, 23, not, not even a year, yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. And then, how'd you decide to start like a in person practice? Your online business is mm -hmm. doing better than a lot of people's, right? Like, mm -hmm. what was that kind of decision? Did you already know that? Hey, I'm just doing this thing and going to transition into an in-person practice. Like, what was that? Like, how did that process come about? And how'd you make that decision to park yourself in one place? Cause I know you that like makes to sense. travel. Yes. Right? Yeah. That makes sense. So, um, originally before the app, I knew I was like, even started at PT school, I'm opening up a business out of school. I just need to learn everything that I need to learn to open it up. Um, and then the app came about Then I started doing well on the app and I was like, dang, and like little birdies came in, like, am I going backwards, opening up a place and putting myself like in a location? But then I was like, I just know if I put a location here, like from the original vision of what I had, because I didn't have this in my area growing up. And then growing up, I play a lot of sports, I have a lot of connections in the area. So I was like, would I just stay online and not use those connections locally? And then um, also, I could also build this up and hire people to train them under my vision. So then ultimately decided to open up and I really, really enjoy doing stuff in person too. Like, obviously I don't want to be doing, moving the needle and doing everything myself um, forever. Like I just hired a doc um, 
but yeah, I just knew what I could provide in person as well. And my team would be able to provide eventually. I just need to set up the structure and I'll be able to get back to being able to travel and having more time learning the CEO role. Um, but it'd be great to have both. So that's why I ultimately decided. That's awesome. So who were you around in your life that where you had that vision? Like that, hey, I can start this and hire someone within the first year to see mm -hmm. my patients so I don't have to get stuck in one place. Because you're obviously not like, hey, I'm going to build a job for myself. You're like, I'm going to mm -hmm. build a yes. uh, a business, you know, that mm -hmm. leverages my time. So mm -hmm. where did you, like, how did you, how'd you figure that part out? To be honest, I really, I really don't, I really don't know. Um, like I, I said earlier, but like who you surround yourself with and then also what you listen to. Yeah. Like when I was driving Uber, when I work out sometimes, my 4 a.m. workouts in school, 4 a.m. wake-ups in school, I would instantly put on business podcasts. Bedros, I put mm -hmm. on Gary Vee. So just like by listening to my osmosis, I start to learn how they think. I read books. I learn how people who are in positions that I want to be in and think. Reading your book, learn how you think. Okay, they're thinking like this. And over time, if you do that for years, while you're doing and implementing, you just think differently. So that's, I think that's where that came from. Um, yeah, I think that's where that came from. Yeah, that's awesome. So um, let me just sidetrack a minute. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, before I want to, I want to talk about your cash practice. I want to talk about some other cool things about you. Uh -huh. um, you live in a van. Yes. Right? Like, how, yes. So tell us about your van. How long have <laughs> you been living in it and how'd that, how'd that come about? Uh, it, I think it's a... <laughs> It might be, it might be like a year and a half now, a little less than a year and a half. I wish it was longer. Like, yeah. I wish I knew about this at the beginning of um, undergrad. I'll probably be having seven figure years already. <laughs> um, but <laughs> um, I did it at the end of PT school, so I had like a weird like time of my like lease and stuff. And I was like, well, I don't want to resign another year because right after school, I'm leaving and I'm opening up the practice that was already set. So I'm going to pay like six months of rent in Chicago while I'm still here paying rent at my new clinic. And I was like, what can I do? And then thankfully, that's why everything happens for you. Everything happens for you for a reason. You just got to figure out your perspective on it. So I was actually on the way to one of my weddings from Chicago, which I also did during school. So like every weekend I was up and down the highway, like back and forth. So worth it. But one time I was on the way to a wedding and I got in a car accident. Someone like ran a red light and hit me in the side, um, totaled my car. And then I was like, well, I got to figure out something to do as far as a car. So then I started looking and I was like, well, I've been thinking about this van life thing. I saw a few things and I was like, Maybe that's a sign. Like I have to buy something else. So it's like, why not buy something that I can like save money on? Um, so long story short, that's how I fell into it. Yeah. And then I was like, I'm going to get the van. And that's then I was awesome. like, it's an asset right off. Cause I had those problems because having an app, like I wasn't, I didn't have much overhead and I didn't, I don't spend a lot of money. I don't, I just keep reinvesting. So I was like, okay, I can reinvest this to a van and have a write off and an asset and somewhere to stay. So I don't have to keep paying rent to that makes me $0. So. Right. Right. How is a van an asset? Um, so one, I mean, it's because it's above 4,000 pounds mm -hmm. and then I use it for my wedding business and then I use it, um, we're not scooters anymore, but you use it for the business. So my entertainment business, which was making the most money at the time, um, I use that for that. Got you. Okay. So then, mm -hmm. so the, basically what you pay for it at some point, whether it's year one or over five years, it gets a uh, tax write off You're not taxes on yep. that. Yeah, exactly. On that money. Yeah, that's yep. awesome. So it's an asset, but and I can also sell it. Like people, were, I've had a few people already ask like to buy it because like it, it's rare. So the van, like different like companies and stuff, want vans like that. So the first week I had my my VW van, I had uh, someone come up and knock on the door and and tell me about another one for sale, and I was like, I just bought uh -huh. this thing. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me to have? Three? Why do I need two? I know, I know I'm gonna get that's in trouble. Funny. Uh, but that's cool. <laughs> and then I met you through Jess at Jess mm -hmm. Jenny last year at CSM. Yep. Mm -hmm. Did you guys at that time know that she had a van too, or did you like? No. You so know? I don't, man, that ended up being a blessing, obviously, because we are where we are today. So um, CSM was, CSM was crazy. So like I said, I started posting in PT school. Mm -hmm. So I had like a, I started like gaining like a little bit of followers in PT school. And I didn't realize that they were all like physical therapists, physical therapy students. So when I went to CSM, obviously that's the biggest event where all of them are in one location. Before I left my hotel, I had like three people asking to take photos with me. And I was like, nice. So I was blindsided because I had no idea that was going to happen. So that's when I met Jess. She came up to me and was like, this is going to sound weird, but I've been following you on Instagram for the last couple of years and you are killing it. And I was like, awesome. Like, let's connect. So we connected. Um, and then that's how we made that yeah. connection. 
And then obviously her knowing the businesses I was doing, she was like, let me introduce you to Aaron. And I was like, sweet. And I've heard your name before. So like, yeah. sweet, please do. I would love that introduction. And then I read your book and then boom, this is history. Voila. That's awesome. Yeah. So, um, so what I want to do is talk about the, how are you, a couple of the strategies you're using to build like your social media, mm -hmm. like, you do some really great stuff. I mean, it's, you know, you're not the only one in the world that does it, but I think that exactly what you're doing, it resonates with you and your personality. Mm -hmm. It's like, Tell us a little bit about you, like your, like your social media strategy. How'd you fall into it? What are the things you do uh -huh. that are working really well to mm -hmm. get engagement and people following you, et cetera? Yeah, that makes sense. So the biggest thing I tell people is literally, I don't create content. I document my life. Mm -hmm. So even from the beginning, um, in PT school, for example, I would film myself studying. I would film myself walking in buildings. I would do little, little mini vlogs, day in life of a physical therapy student. Um, and just document my life. So I, I seldomly sit down and like create content or make a funny reel or something like that. Like even this podcast, we're both documenting. So it's just like having a conversation, document everything. And then now with my clinic as well, I just document me growing the clinic, um, showing me work with patients, um, getting reviews. So it's literally documenting my life. That's all it is. Yeah. And so what is like, just some of the strategies, like how would someone get started documenting their mm -hmm. day? Are you mm -hmm. asking patients for permission? Like, what are some mm -hmm. of the things that you mm -hmm. do to um, do that? So. Yeah, definitely ask uh, the patient for permission. Do you mind being filmed? Um, but also, so a lot of people would say, oh, my day's not exciting. I'm too boring. It's not. But in reality, everybody's day is so unique. You're such a unique human that somebody wants to see what you're doing. And your day's way different. Like, if you look at my social media, it's very repetitive it's the same thing because i'm a very routine person so i'll show myself getting coffee probably four times a week and it does well just like it did the first time because you have new people it's eight billion people in the world someone hasn't seen it um and then also i like to think about like like for you i would love to see how your day structured even at our last mass i was asking like how do you structure your day like tell me take me through your day like how do you do your meetings i want to see that stuff because if it's somebody that is in a position i want to be in I want to learn how they think, how they operate, how they do their day, how they do their morning routine, workouts, all, all that type of stuff. So I'm like, what was someone that wants to like be in my position that I am right now that is behind me that want to see that same thing? It doesn't, it's the same thing up the ladder. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, I'll be that guy for someone else and continue to elevate and someone else is that guy for me. So documenting your life. I mean, it's, it's not boring. Um, just start doing it and then don't be afraid of judgment. A lot of people are afraid of judgment to start filming themselves but mm. once you get over the judgment and realize that you're having an impact easy so is it like get a phone get a tripod set it up put mm -hmm. it in the bathroom and then i walk back mm. to my bedroom and then i walk back in the bathroom and brush my teeth on film that's simple right and then yes. i go down to, i skip the getting dressed part and then i put mm. it in the kitchen <laughs> and i have it film me making the kids breakfast you know yes right? and then i put it outside yes. and then it's i just turn it on and then me and the kids walk out the door and then yep. and I and that's a whole video right there. To, right. I stitch these mm -hmm. things together. I just, Hey, that's just my morning routine. Boom. Yep. 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. Yep. And people, what I've seen, yeah. People want to know what you're doing. So like, that's why whatever, whatever the businesses are, I tell people make sure that you live in what you preach, whatever you are preaching, whatever that is, make sure you are doing it and living it and not mm -hmm. just talking because then when you show it, the discipline and seeing you go to the gym every day, when I go to the gym and I don't feel like it, I tell my social media, I'm at the gym. I don't feel like it. They want that in themselves because when they don't feel like it, they don't go to the gym. So they want to mm -hmm. know how you think and how you tick and what makes you get there. So show them that. So yeah. it's just literally that simple. Yeah. And then, all right. So now you've got your reels captured for the day, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you just open up Instagram, create a reel, and you just find some background music and put in a couple little clips of the different pieces from your phone. Yep. That's all. I use an app called InShot that I stitch together, but I film and document so much that mm -hmm. I could stop documenting or filming today and I will have content for like seven months. Right. So it's a continual thing. So you never run the content. So I'm not like waking up and like, Oh, I need to post today. Uh, let me go try to make something up. So I've documented so much. It's like, let me go see what I want to post today. Yeah. So a piece you of content like, today, man. Is there like a folder on your phone with like yesterday, the day before, like, how yeah. do you like organize that stuff? Cause um, to me, that gets overwhelming too. I'm just like, oh. exactly. That's true. So I have, uh, I use Google folders. So I have a, I have a virtual team too. my mm -hmm. guy, um, a couple of full-time virtual and 
he edits a lot for me too as well now, but we organize it so well to where like, it'll be the patient clips and I put it under my same patient's name, session one, session two, session three. He can go in there and edit some folders. I can go in there and edit some photo folders. And now I know what I'm, when I'm shooting, I know what I'm shooting for. I'm like, oh, this would be a really good one. Show myself grabbing the belt from the drawer at my clinic. Turn the camera a little bit, show me putting it on, doing the distraction, that's it. Talking to the patient, that's a whole video. Yeah. But I can see these micro things now that I've obviously filmed for so long and it makes it so much easier. But I just, I'll say I, I'd rather have too much content than too little because even when I'm like traveling on a plane for a few days, it's like, I don't have to create this entire week. I don't have to. Yeah, I'm good we can just content. show people last week, this week, and it didn't exactly about the same. Exactly, and no one right? ever knows. Some yeah. content's like from seven months ago. So yeah. That's cool. And are you doing anything like, are you doing like a call to action? Like follow me? Or are you just like, Hey, here's my thoughts for the day. Here's the thing. And then people are just following, you know, liking, mm -hmm. messaging you, et cetera. Yeah, definitely do. I do CTAs at the end of my reels too, where it's like, mm -hmm. like, and like, and um, comment for more, like, and follow yeah. for more because like those little soft TC, I forgot the statistics, but it actually does help people convert more because they might like what they saw, but they might forget to like and follow. They're like, Oh, like, let me follow this guy. Or they go check out the rest of your stuff. And that's how you get more people to follow, but always definitely a CTA. Yeah, of course. That's awesome. Um, okay. So now we've got, uh, let's say la it's like last summer, like mm -hmm. I, we, we started working together in like August ish, I think mm -hmm. and you hadn't yeah, yet August. like started. So you hadn't yet started your practice or you're getting in the process of doing it. And you're like, Aaron, I'm going to, mm -hmm. I've got this lease to open like January 1st mm -hmm. between graduating. And then did you just like travel around your van, work on your like your, your app, like what were you doing? Did you mm -hmm. take some time off? Like, what um, were you doing then? <laughs> my family always jokes, you need to take time off. No. So then I was like, obviously I was studying for boards cause boards was in Ju June, July, Okay. July. So I was studying heavy for boards. Um, and then working on the app. And then also during that time I was writing like a plan, like a loose business plan for the clinic, just so I can have ideas, marketing. Cause you know, as time goes on, you start to do stuff. You start to forget what your original plans were. Um, and then I actually went to California for five weeks in the van. That was my first van life trip, solo van life trip. Um, went to San Diego, hung out on the beach, um, really got inspired by seeing all the houses, like literally every day. I probably had like 25,000 steps a day. I would walk around up and down the beach and I would just look at the houses. I was sitting on a little boardwall and I'm just like looking like, okay, there's people living like this. Not just one. There's another one next door. Then there's another next door. And I'm like, look at that car. Look at that person. Someone owns this business. So it just made me so inspired. And I was like, why not me? So then I go to my pad and write down, like, what do I need to do to get there? Mm -hmm. And that really helped me a ton. And then um, obviously in that process too, I think I might've just passed boards. I might've talked to you when I was still like studying toward the end of boards. So I was trying to like time it up properly because I knew once I, because I'm zealous. So once I focus on the business, I didn't want to take away from boards and not pass and keeping the main thing, the main thing. So then when I started with you, I was like, okay, I need to like start with him. So it's in time. So I can like do it a few months before I open. I don't want to wait till I open so I can like prepare, ask you questions and go hit the ground running with speed. And that's what I did. And I mean, it, it helped. I was able to literally pay for like three and a half years of rent, four years of rent within the first couple of months. Yeah. So that was, that was the biggest wait. I was like, what about this rent? But then that, now I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm good for four years. Yeah. So that's awesome. I remember you being like, Aaron, but I don't open till like officially open till January. Yeah. And you know, you, you started seeing patients in the fall and you did some yeah. months even before you were officially opened. Like, yeah. Boxes on the floor, everything. Yeah. I told people before they came in, but they still came. Yeah. That's awesome. So what's the, like, was January, December, was that like one of your biggest months? Like what'd you guys do uh -huh. like revenue in the clinic? Um, so I did the highest I've done was 33 K Yeah, and that was right before the new year. And then, yeah. uh, I don't even know what month it is now. Right now, I'm at like 27. We're halfway through the we're 19th, 20th, yeah. um, 27K. So, yeah, I've been consistently, ever since opening, I've been over 20K, which is yeah. absolutely amazing. And then now it's just reaching the, trying to get to the next level. So, yeah, that's dope. So, just for context for people, like how many people a week are you seeing? What are you charging? What is your like most popular programs that you're, that you're um, selling or offering? So, I have four programs I have the app, which is like a fat loss workout mm -hmm. program. And then I have the wellness program, which I roll physical therapy clients into um, and what I do with like my NFL guys. And then I have physical therapy. And then I have 
the sports performance. Yeah. Sports performance, I'm working with like youth athletes. So the sports performance is 4,500 for six months and they come see me once a week. Um, and then I get the workouts online as well. And that's why the app is a really good asset too, because the app goes across all of these, but there's no additional cost to me. So my mm -hmm. physical therapy clients get on there as well. So it's just like extra value stacking. Um, and they get a community and I send like um, eBooks that I already have. Then the physical therapy um, program. So normally I haven't really done any other besides 10 sessions. Um, so I have a 10 session pack. It's 300 an hour. But if you pay up front, it's 2,700. Almost 98% of people pay up front or do the paid in full. So it ends up being um, 270 a session um, after they do that. And then it trickles down, same price yeah. down. And then the wellness membership um, is $3.99 a month. And they come in like once every other week or something like that. And then I think that's it. Oh, and then the app is six months for 2,500. And that's totally virtually virtual. And then I have like a virtual team too that helps me with all of that. So dude, that's dope. That's really awesome. What were like one or two of the things that we worked on when you first started that made the biggest difference for you? Mm -hmm. Hmm. One of the biggest difference is like the structure like going through the modules and learn, seeing how you had your practice set up, the legalities of different things, make sure that I had that in, tied in. Mm -hmm. It actually helped me like mentally be able to like, okay, I have my foundation. I'm good to go try these different things. And then also, honestly, the simple fact of being around other like high achievers in that group, other yeah. people that are doing it. I met some really good people that I meet with all the time. And it's like really cool to be surrounded by them because otherwise – who else am I really talking to? It feels really, really lonely. Um, so being able to have that and then be able to get questions, answers on our weekly calls. Um, and yeah, so that's been like the biggest part too. Yeah, dude, that's awesome. Cause I mean, wouldn't you agree? Like, I mean, you'd probably be successful without any help. You'd probably mm -hmm. figure it out, but Last it's about, right. It's getting there faster, right? Mm -hmm. Doing it like not feeling isolated. Yes. Know, right. And, yes. You know, like, do you have people in your life that you can talk to about your, outside of like our group, like, uh -huh. uh, I think your your girlfriend is also a business owner, yes. right? I mean, so, yep. Now I do. So before yeah. before that, it was like, so I opened up, um, funny story. So I opened up here and, and social media. She found me on social media. She messaged me. I didn't message her back for like three <laughs> weeks, four weeks. I have people in my DMs and sometimes girls message hard eyes and says something. I'm just like, hey, disregard that stuff. I'm not worried about that right now. And then um, we have like a mutual friend who owns a business also in her area. And she saw me like in their restaurant and was like, hey, do you know this guy? Like, what's his number? So she got my number. And then we met on like just referral basis. She owns a couple of chiropractic offices, a restaurant, real estate. Um, so we just met on like business. And then we were like, wow, we're very, very similar. We had a similar outlook on healthcare. She's also cash based. Um, so we just hung out a lot. And, and then we started dating. Yeah, and then, so dude. now it's amazing because now we can talk about business so much and it's not like having a spouse who's not a business owner to where you got to kind of suppress it or try not to talk about him and like oh can we just talk about something else but no so we literally get together and we can talk about business all day every day and it's really cool um to have that support too and then in the community as well we do a lot of stuff together and people love it in our local area so mm -hmm. it just happened to work out really well which i'm thankful yeah. for that's awesome yeah i've got a couple friends here that i can talk business mm -hmm. with like unfiltered and a lot of them yeah can't, you know <laughs> yeah um, you're like you're like holding your breath, trying like right. you really want to talk about business and just can't relate. No, you can't. Or you you, <laughs> you you know you talk about certain numbers and they're like, what do you, you know? They just don't have the you know the context Mind or something. Blown. It's like whoa, yeah, 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 yeah. That's really <laughs> cool. Um, Odell, like, where do you see this going in the future? Like, what's your like one or three year vision for your businesses, mm -hmm. your life? Like, what are some of the other mm -hmm. things you're planning on doing down the road? So when I haven't decided if I want to have like a multi-location or have like one booming location, I haven't decided that yet. Um, but I want to continue to grow the online platform, then also the clinic. And then also what I'm very like passionate about is like helping people behind me. Like the, I don't know why that keeps coming back, but I used to, so before I used to hate speaking, like I don't want to speak, do a presentation, but then something like switched. God, like, just like, Hey, this is switched. And now I'm like, I yearn to speak to people. I yearn to go talk on stages and stuff like that so i've had a great opportunity the last like couple of years to speak like 10 times i went out to vegas and spoke to their students and it's like really cool 
because now the information that I thought everybody knew that I can like tell them about, it just gives them a perspective and you can change one person's life. So one of my passions is, is like helping like other PTs um, realize what they can do. And it's not even necessarily, yes, business, but I want to do more of like the social media thing too. So like, that'd be like the niche that I want to do in the future. Um, yeah. So, and then a lot of people see what I do. And so, so many people ask questions and stuff. I'm like, I realize that people really don't know something that might seem black and white to me isn't so black and white to someone else. And likewise, something that's black and white to you that I've learned from you wasn't black and white to me. So then I learned, like, even when I opened up the in-person, cause I was so used to online, mm -hmm. um, my girlfriend was like, Oh, do you have business cards? I want to put it in my business pamphlets or something I'm like business cards, pamphlets. <laughs> no, they just message me on Instagram and then they, they buy, but it's not like that in person. So it was like a few things where I'm like, it's not basic. So I want to go back and teach people different right. things too. That's awesome. And you've started, you have a group for PT students mm -hmm. or mentoring. Can you tell us a little yep. bit how that come about and what, who's it for? Yep. So PT students, similar to the app, I always let my audience, let the audience tell me what they want based on what they see me doing. So like I got, I got up to like 35 people who asked me like, do you have any mentorship? Can we get on a Zoom call to chat to pick your brain? I want to start a business. And I'm like, well, we can't do that respectfully. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so I was like, okay, I keep getting these. There might be something here. So why not just start a Facebook group or free Facebook group or do something to start to curate this audience, the value, contact information. This is like so valuable because they're all want the same thing in one area. So then we started that. Um, and there's like a little over, might be like a little over 600 people in there now. So that showed me like, okay, people need help. And most of them are students. Um, students are new grads and people who are interested in business. One of the questions on the group is like, hey, we're going to talk about numbers. We're going to talk about business. We're going to talk about making more as a PT, more impact. And what's more impact comes with more money. So if you're not interested in that, don't join the group. So that's kind of what we do too and showing them kind of what's possible. Dude, that's really awesome. That's that's really cool. You know, I think it is one of those lessons that uh, it's about like listening to the audience and what do they want, mm -hmm. like asking them, mm -hmm. but also kind of recognizing the patterns because I think a lot of people yes. try to force an idea because they think it's mm -hmm. great, but it's like, what do the people who resonate with you want? That's true. Right. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you've done in your clinic based on what your patients have asked for that might be different or something different, you know, something new or that you're doing maybe even different than what you learned from like my program, like is because people have asked oh. for it? Um, yeah. not really, not really anything people have asked for, um, my, I guess my marketing right now, which I'm going to, so I'm trying to like, I think a, a lot of people struggle with this. So mm -hmm. seeing a lot of people that struggle with this, it, it helps me like make sure that I try not to, they see what other people are doing as far as like workshops, running ads, doing this. And they hear from one person, they switch to this. They hear from another person, they switch to this. So they're spread so thin across their marketing funnels. But what I'm doing is maximizing, drying out the funnels that I have so far before I move on to the next. Mm -hmm. So one thing that we learn a lot in the mastermind, which I've been learning, I still know how to do it, um, is the workshops. I haven't done any workshops yet. Yeah. But rather what I'm doing is using my asset, which is the social media. Social media, meeting with people because I've had, that's how I met my girlfriend. She met with me. She wanted to like talk about social media and like get some tips on that. And then I found out what she was doing. I'm like, I want some tips. You got a seven figure business. I want some tips from you. So it was like a mutual thing. So I'm using social media as my asset um, to get people in as well. And then making relationships. But one thing that I did learn, like I said before, I don't, I was like, no, I can't get on zoom with you. I don't want to meet with you. Mm -hmm. So even when I opened it up, so people in the local area knew where I was based on like my video and I didn't even know that local people followed people. A few people came up and like gave me their business card. A chiropractor came, massage therapist, another Cairo, another PT down the street. And I was like, how are you guys finding me? I don't even have my location out there. And I was like, wait, I need to use this social media. And I didn't want to meet with people. And then my girlfriend was like, no, you need to meet with those people. Those are like referral sources. And I'm like, mm -hmm. like I said, black and white to some people, it wasn't black and white to me. Then I met with a few of them in a local gym as well. And then they're like sending patients because they want to be a part of it and they believe in what you stand for and tagging them on social media. I mean, yeah. it doesn't cost me anything. So they think it's so cool. So that's kind of like my main like driver right now, which I thought is different than what I was going to do. Because before opening up, I did study the workshops. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go do a workshop here, workshop here. But that's not my marketing, kind right. of my marketing funnel right now. Right. I think like what I hear you saying is, you're doing what's working for you and it may mm -hmm. not be what's working for everyone else, but it's working for you. So you're not going to shift away from it until exactly you know, it stops working or you have, it. right. It's either it stops working or you have time to do another channel. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right? 
Yeah, mm -hmm. that's awesome. And that's a huge lesson. Um, Odell, uh, before we wrap up, uh, if someone wants to find you online on your social media, check you out, where do they go to find you? You can go to my Instagram at Odell Miller 25, O D E L L Miller, M I L L E R 25. Awesome. Was 25 your number? Or uh, no, I think that's my, I made that, I think it was my high school number or something. That's like my favorite number. I think it was my football number in high school. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a, do you have an off the bench football jersey with your name on the back yet? Now I'm going to look for one. Okay. That's genius. I didn't think about that. Yeah. I, I was talking about... to, at the retreat in Utah, I was talking to Zach, you know, cause he does uh -huh. soccer and uh -huh. I have an Aaron LeBauer soccer jersey. You know, it's like uh -huh. my A, you know, it's got my A. Here's the crest, and it says Lamauer mm -hmm. on the back, and the number yeah. is eighty because eighty percent is good enough. But uh -huh. I, you know, I don't get. I, I wanted a jersey of my own, and actually, then I ended up getting um like six uh, sets of cycling, you know, bibs and stuff with my logos and stuff. That's on it. really cool. So, that's really cool. You know, let, I mean, if you get one, I, I think it'd be dope. You know, I think it's. Yeah. I think that's it's but something I learned that from Bedros. Cool. It's like don't wear don't wear a jersey with someone else's name on it. Wear no. a jersey with yeah. your name on it. Exactly. Right? Yes. So, you know, I love like, that. I have a bunch of jerseys from obviously from playing football, but nothing like yeah. with off the bench on it. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I think you could do like a little off the bench Miller, yeah. you know, whatever yeah. your number is and you could give them that's, out to people. That's really whatnot. cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, I'm going to get So when you do that, let me know. I would love one with a little bower on the back. I will. Okay. I'm literally going to write that on my to-do list right when, <laughs> right when we get off of this. <laughs> um, I, my cousin, my, my nephew is playing football in high school and I was like, uh -huh. Emil, when you get a jersey with LeBauer on it and you get an, get mm -hmm. a chance to get an extra, I was like, can I have one? <laughs> you yes. Know? So he was, he was telling me, Uncle Aaron, you know, I'm, we're going to get jerseys uh -huh. this year. So anyways, that's, funny. that's, that, that's that. Um, that's funny. If there's any advice you have to people listening that maybe we didn't talk about today or that you think is important to reiterate, um, can you mm -hmm. just share like your one or two top pieces for people who want to like grow a business and, you know, scale things up and help more people? Mm -hmm. Number one thing, do it, start it try it. What do you have to lose? Like we're only, we're only time continues to go. It doesn't stop for anyone. And then for people that say they don't have time to start, they're in school. I have a full-time job. I have kids. Trust me, you have time because we all have the same 24 hours. Start it. You will not regret it. Only thing you will regret in the future is honestly not trying. Yeah, that's huge. Odell, thank you so much for being here today. This is Thanks for really having me. Awesome. It was amazing. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I hope to do this again in like another year and catch up yes, with you all. Easy. And yeah. Okay. Done. <laughs> and uh I'll do a couple uh day in the life of Aaron LeBauer uh videos. So let's go. Um, Tag all me. Right? <laughs> we'll definitely do it. All right, Odell. Thank you so much. Um awesome. hey guys, thanks for joining us for the Aaron LeBauer show. Um just get out there, start, do it, go big, and we'll see you on the next episode.